Hi, this is Dave O'Toole, and I am from Northboro, Massachusetts, and this is going to be, I have a tw an 18 by 24 canvas here, and what I'm going to be doing is I've covered it with a layer of uh, white uh, mixed with coarse pumice gel. It's a great product uh, made by Golden Artist Colors. And I also added glass microspheres to fill in the gaps between the coarser um, pumice particles. So this canvas has got white all over it in a pretty thick uh, arrangement. And to keep it wet, I'm just gonna, you know, spritz, spritz a little on there. What I'm gonna paint today is a floral abstract. So something that sort of evokes flowers, but doesn't really paint a picture of real flowers. And to start that out, Think about what colors I want. I am now going to take some glass microspheres out of my bucket. And I'll show this to you in just a sec. So these, these right here are glass microspheres mixed in with acrylic binder and then I've got my raw sienna, my manganese blue hue, my yellow ochre, and my sap green, or uh, uh, olive green. And I'm going to mix in, I'm going to start, because it's hard to get phthalo out once you put it in, I'm going to start with the greens and then add the blue. Okay, so let's create some Let's create some vertical uh, foliage here. And I'm just gonna be very free with this. Just going up and down to kind of suggest that the foliage is, see we're not gonna be able to, there's no way you could really draw every little leaf. But, oh, I got some blue in there, but that's okay. I'm gonna have some areas where the blue comes in more. So I'm just toning the background at this point. This isn't a, uh, and I'm beginning to define some forms a little bit, but not too, too much. I'm not going to go wild here, because this is the background. And I'm putting in some yellow ochre on this side to kind of give it a, uh, give it the whole thing overall a bit of a golden glow, kind of a hue to it. Okay, now some of that's going to get covered up, of course, because I'm building up very thickly a la prima. But that's one of the very nice things about the Ella Prima style, is you can be very free. <laughs> Eventually it will pile up and fall off and you'll, you know, you'll have nothing but mud. But uh, one of the nice things about the microspheres is that you get um, thick paint that nonetheless stays together. Now I'm going to get a smaller knife and put in some blue and maybe even a little bit of a cobalt violet hue. So I'm going to get a teeny, a teeny knife. And a little bit of regular phthalo blue to make it darker. And then you know, cobalt violet hue. I know it is around here somewhere, but I'm going to take a little bit of this magenta and I'm going to bring that up and show the camera. And then our wonderful Dana at Northboro Cable Access Television can edit it all together for you. Let's see, I want a little bit of... I'm going to have some Terra Rosa here. Terra Rosa is a... Uh, it's a red oxide color, basically, synthetic iron oxide. Alright. I'm going to spritz my palette once and spritz the painting a little bit. So here's my colors for this part. I have got my, uh, my blue, my red, my other blue, and a little bit of magenta over up in the corner. And I'm going to take the existing microspheres and take some of this blue and purple and magenta and kind of insidiously mix it in, creating a little bit of a color controversy here. And then blend a little. I'm going to take some of the purple mostly by itself and give us some notes of that of that magenta. And then to balance that out, 
I'm also going to add a little, little bits of red. And then maybe a little bit more of this down here. I'm going to draw some vertical lines through it to suggest stems. And again, I'm not being, you know, super ultra careful at this stage because it's early. You want to be free. You want to move. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, tighten up like you're doing a deadlift. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to, uh, you want to be free. All right. So now that's that. And I am going to take some ivory black and start to add some darker, some sections of brown and dark brownish blue. Rather Mars black, pardon me. Okay. And I'm now going to take that Mars black, some microspheres, microsphere gel, some phthalo blue, some of that dark red to make a deep, and some of that brown there to make a deep, deep brown. And I'm just going to take some blobs of that deep brown and put it behind and around these other colors. Letting them mix just partially, you know. I don't want to smother, I don't want to smother the little blossoms, but I also don't want to leave them just on a white background. There's got to be some contrast. And then down here, I can sweep. I can sweep some of these darker areas because let's break this a little bit. Just a leisurely kind of drawing out little spikes in the paint to make it look like there's crisscrossing stems and blossoms. And in terms of gestalt principles of visual perception, we're breaking a contour. You have a contour of this spot and then I'm breaking that contour by making little spikes in it and stuff. So I'm going to continue along here. And we're going to begin to possibly get a little bit more dramatic with the magenta and the violet. Add some notes of uh, very strong purple, which has nonetheless been a little denatured with a little bit of brown. All right. So microspheres and some brown in here so that the purple is uh, still interesting but it should not be neon vivid or it's not going to mesh with the earth tones in the other part of the painting. So even the most, you know, if you want to leave, so if you want to leave some of the dyes ultra pure, then the best strategy in my opinion is to make tiny spots of that. Okay, so we're just building, building contrasts of different spots against each other. And, you know, they can't all be hyper brilliant. Some of them have got to be a little bit more subdued. And then you have areas where you, where you suggest some movement but don't really define it. All right, uh, so I am going to keep going. Looks like the top part is kind of light, needs some a little, little attention. build up an all over texture, you know, kind of a Jackson Pollock feel where the whole painting is all involved in getting something at you. So you can see that the overall areas of color are defined. I like to use white as a background, not only because it's easy to coat the whole thing with white, but then you can take more white and cover up an area if you need and no one will be the wiser. So the idea is that you can go back and forth if it becomes a little overdeveloped here, paint some out to white, and eventually, you know, you, you get, get it to a place where you like a new plate. 
a somewhat bigger knife. And I'm going to start out with microspheres that have been mixed with white paint already. And I'm going to get a generous helping of that stuff. And for those of you who do not know, I will briefly explain this microsphere stuff I'm talking about. Microspheres are tiny, you know, between 10 and 100 microns, which is a millionth of a meter. Uh, 10, 100, 10 and 100 microns hollow glass spheres. Some of them are not hollow. The idea is that they take up much more space in the, in the, fo in the foam of the paint when you mix them into acrylic binder. The pigment becomes dispersed because it covers the microspheres. And then the microspheres roll past each other like millions of tiny ball bearings so that the pigment gets dispersed. The upshot is that you get great color blending and it stays, dry, uh, stays wet for a long, long period. Um, acrylic tends to dry very quickly and it dries through capillary action. So the more convoluted the capillaries are because they have to go around microspheres, the better you're going to get in terms of uh, drying time because it'll take longer. So I'm going to take a little bit of pigment now. A little bit of this blue and a little bit of this and a little bit of yellow ochre. And a little bit of ultramarine blue. So mixing two blues, ultramarine blue and manganese, manganese blue hue. And then the secret ingredient toward the end is going to be transparent orange iron oxide, which we are going to use to warm up selected parts of the background. Okay, so I'm going to get my touch of blue pigment on there, my touch of green pigment, and my touch of ultramarine blue pigment. So I've got about this much blue to this much white, quite a bit of white, because I'm only looking to create I'm only looking, looking to create like a turquoisey light tint. And that's coming out more green than I wanted, but we get some more blue on there. Okay, now we're talking, now we're talking. I'm going to put some of this into selected areas. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a coherent film that covers. You can just kind of you can just kind of dance the color on top as long as you don't. And that's one of the nice things about having a painting that it's very thick. Because once it's thick, you can go even thicker. <laughs> you know, if you're obsessed with keeping it thin, which I used to be, you know, a lot of times you work for a little while and then, oh, it's getting too built up. This is real different because you can just, you can just keep working. Okay. A little bit of a little bit of more vivid blue. Now I'm going to take some of this golden brown red. And some of the yellow ochre and mix it with the microspheres and get kind of a greenish golden brown, which I'll put in some of the lower areas. So, huh. well, we're getting somewhere, I think. All right, so we've got purple, purple, purple here, purple, purple, purple up there, but we don't have any here, but maybe we should have a contrasting purple or yellow or something. So let me do a little thinking here. We've got some forms and colors going on, but we're not quite done. I think there's another, another little phase going on here. I think it's time to take I don't know, I think some yellow might make this pop, but it's going to be a very careful choice of which yellow. Hmm. All right, I've decided to go with an AZO yellow and some yellow ochre. Oops. Because AZO yellow by itself might be a little too brilliant, so we're gonna touch, we're gonna uh, change it with some earth tones, and believe it or not, 
a very tiny drop of the same purple that is in those other I mean we are talking about like a tiny smidgen of the purple that's in those other flowers and a little bit of magenta and what that's going to do is warm up the yellow so that it doesn't scream out of the painting. You've got to add some of the colors that are in the painting when you're going to add on an accent otherwise the accent is going to look tacked on you know where you really want it to look like it's part of the painting. All right so I'm going to get some more microspheres gel, which I mix up out in the shed because you don't want to get that stuff in your lungs, so I wear a mask and you don't want to bring it anywhere, you know, anywhere near your kitchen. Another little spritz up here. So we've got our AZO yellow or AZO yellow orange which I only had a little of, some yellow ochre, some microspheres, and that's already a nice golden, you know, kind of yellow. And now, ha ha, here we go. All right. You see, if it was a really super brilliant yellow, you just, it just would not look right. You might, I might still put a touch of that somewhere, but you don't want to like, you don't want to put it all over the place. You know, like for example, I might go like, Doop. okay. So now we've got some interplay between the yellow pieces and the and the uh, now with a little more pure all red. Can create subtle. Oh, that, that wasn't about to be subtle. This is subtle. Little bits of orange here and there. Now I know it's you know lately I've been using orange as a floral accent in my paintings, but this is spring and it's I think it's okay. You know I'm not I'm not, not too 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 worried about it. All right, we're getting somewhere. And maybe some uh, some very teeny weeny drops of pure red, that pure old red. That looks like an eyeball. I have to fix that. Okay, so here I've made a mistake. I put some pure old red into a white area and it made pink. So I'm going to fix that by covering it up with yellow. <laughs> and now that's how you do professional art. But it's okay because this is so thick. This is so thick that if I needed to. And I've done this. If I need to, I can scrape out down to the canvas and replace that area of white with the same substrate and then gradually fix it. All right, so we're not done. We're not done. I love to just wiggle, you know, when you, when you get the right spot and you can just kind of put in some, some splashes of, of what you want to do. All right. Bottom, middle, top. Okay, so the top needs a little careful attention. I'm gonna get a pointy knife and do a little, just do a little bit of the tracing that I like to do. And just break up any blobs that look like they need to be broken up, you know? And it creates the impression of stems and it just breaks up the color nicely, you know? So the top right, I think it may just need a little bit of white, a little bit of almost off white. So I'm going to take the smallest knife and I'm going to put a few areas of, of just white stippled in, which is, this isn't pure white actually, there's some, there's definitely some color in this, but I want to smooth out this top right area and then coordinate that by touching the same color into some other areas so that the whole thing kind of ties together. Some of these areas looked a little bare, so. And it adds texture if you, if you slap the knife, you know, slap, slap like that. 
So I don't want to go too wild, but I want to smooth out, you know, the edges, the corners, any areas that don't look. Now take a little bit of brown in here, a little bit of yellow ochre. Fill in some of these areas. And it's just about making it look like a complete picture. Being able to look at the whole thing and say, wow, there's not one area that looks too empty or too full, that things are kind of working with each other instead of against each other. All right, getting close to the end here. I can see that we need a little bit of, a little bit of tan in some of these white areas. And this is what, the great thing about the Alla Prima style is that you can get into the same mindset, the same spirit, because you're painting the whole thing in about an hour or less while it's wet. So you don't, you don't go out in the world and get bad news and then have to come back and finish your painting with a totally different mindset or you, know, or you don't start a different painting. It's very focused. So I think we're almost done. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we're almost done. In fact, I can barely even see anything that I need to do. I want to see if I have any yellow left or maybe a spot up at the top left. And I do have some yellow left. So I am going to touch a little bit of, you know, so that the, so that the, uh, the yellow parts of the painting are not all trapped in the middle of the picture. You've got to have some near the edge. Okay, and I think, I think that about does it. We don't want to. We, we don't want to like go nuts, but and just you know. All right. I mean, stand back, stand back, looking. You know. I think it's about done. The distribution of darks. So the dark areas. There's some here. There's an area of darks vertically. You know. So I wonder. Does there need to? Does there need to be something over there? Well, if it is, I better do it quick and I better make it pretty minimal. I better make it a well-considered touch. Now I'm going to crisscross a little bit to integrate those patches so that they don't look like I just did them at the last minute. And that is your painting. So here it is. Um, this is our spring, spring floral abstract. Painted in about, let's see, 30, painted in about 30 minutes. So that is our Alla Prima painting demonstration. In about 30 minutes, I went from a canvas that was totally white, covered with uh, uh, pumice and acrylic white paint and glass microspheres, and then added additional paint and microspheres to make a, a floral abstract. So I hope everyone is doing good and staying safe and thank you so much for watching.